Hello everyone, welcome back. As promised, I am here with a book discussion today. And the book that I chose is Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert, most famously known for her memoir, Eat, Pray, Love, that went on to huge acclaim with Julia Roberts. So a strange one, some may think. But I decided that instead of just focusing on books that you may think of for this self-awakening journey or spiritual awakening or transformational journey that we're all on, there's other aspects that come into play too. And so I thought each week I would just grab a book that calls me off the shelf that, that week that brings in some of the other things that we look to for this whole growth period that we're on when we are on a journey. So creativity is a huge one of those because if we don't get back in touch with our creativity that so many of us shut off, then our whole life force energy doesn't open up. So I thought we'll start with this and it is a super fun book. So with that, I am Tina Moody and I am the author of The Spiritual Awakening of an Analytical Mind as well as co-host to the podcast Intuition Talks with my good friend Kristen O'Mara. And let's begin. So obviously I'm not going to tell you everything about this book because that would be no fun for you and you wouldn't have an incentive to go back and listen or read it or listen to it. So instead I picked three points that we are going to talk about that kind of jumped out to me from the book and let's get started. So the first one is creativity and I'm going to just leave it to her words so you can get some perspective on how she comes about it. Let me step back for a second. The reason that I chose this book off the bookshelf for me in the first place when I bought it at the store was that, of course, I just stumbled onto Elizabeth's um, TED Talk from like 14 or 15 years ago. And I just liked her demeanor, her sense of humor. And I thought, okay, this is, this is, I like her. She's my kind of people. And then I saw her book and that's why I grabbed it. So through some of the things that I'll read to you real quickly, you'll get that sense of humor and um, I think you'll appreciate it as well. So Elizabeth says, the universe buries strange jewels deep within us all and then stands back to see if we can find them. The hunt to uncover those jewels, that's creative living. The courage to go on that hunt in the first place, that's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. The often surprising results of that hunt that's what she calls big magic. So she's broadly speaking of living a life that is driven more strongly by curiosity than fear, which is the whole creative living beyond fear. So doing something out of curiosity for it in spite of our fear of doing it. And I know I run into that in a big way, especially since I had basically shut down my own creativity in my adult years. It's, um, it's, it's time to awaken it for so many of us. So she, what I also liked is that she talks about not quitting our daytime job to pursue our creative loves or, you know, things that we, stumble upon that we find great joy in because we we don't want to put that much pressure on these things these new loves that we're finding or or rekindling or or discovering kind of thing so she does encourage people to keep their day job which i thought was funny and interesting to put in the book so she talks about a creative life being an amplified life a bigger happier expanded more interesting life and I'm still getting in touch with that. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Uh, I put it down my to-do list too much. It may start up here at the start of the day, but I haven't switched that switch yet to say this is more important than, I don't know, washing the dishes, which seems more important. And that's completely silly, right? Or sitting on the couch, quite honestly, in the later parts of the day. So... Yeah, so she's looking at us just stepping outside our box and being a little brave. And, you know, I think so many of us can put ourselves in that kind of comfortable box and can use the excuse it's not our personality, people don't see us that way, we're too old for that, we're not good enough for that, and, or, 
you know, whatever the excuse may be. And we need to get over that and just start creating whatever that may be. There's so many avenues of cr creating, right? And it's not just artwork. It could be baking, singing, or doing whatever you want to do. But we have one go at this life that we have here. So kind of let's step out of the box and see where it takes us and push ourselves outside that comfort zone. Let that life force energy start flowing. It's all good. So let's move on next to the second part, which is fear. So fear we all need for basic survival, but we do not need fear for our creativity endeavors although it does show up. So she says, your fear will always be triggered by your creativity because creativity asks you to enter into realms of uncertain outcome and fear hates uncertain outcome. And she has some great insight to fear and creativity and that they are, as she puts it, conjoined twins born of the same womb at the same time and so where there's creativity, there's always fear. There's almost like this counterbalance. So she suggests that we make space for fear every day, that we do not battle it, do not attempt to kill it off, or we may eliminate the creativity on the other side. Instead, she says to make lots of space for fear, but establish boundaries with fear. She said, the less she fights fear, the less fear fights back. Um, and she actually has this funny, I think, a welcoming speech for fear as she embarks on a new creative endeavor. And I want to read it to you because it's that entertaining. Hold on, page 25. Okay, you ready? Dearest fear, creativity and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything interesting. And may I say, you are superb at your job, but I will also be doing my job on this road trip, which is to work hard and stay focused. And creativity will be doing its job, which is to remain stimulating and inspiring. There's plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us, so make yourself at home. But understand this, creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. I recognize and respect that you are part of this family, and so I will never exclude you from our activities. But still, your suggestions will never be followed. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You are not allowed to touch the roadmaps. You're not allowed to suggest detours. You're not allowed to fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. But above all else, my dear old familiar friend, you're absolutely forbidden to drive. And so that's a discussion she has with fear, but more for herself and how she deals with fear each time she embarks on a new creative endeavor. So for her, it's likely writing for you or I, it may be something completely different. And I just thought that was a really fun way to address it and to kind of hold yourself accountable and remind yourself and show yourself a little love with that. So love that completely. Okay, so the last section, just to keep these a little bit shorter is ideas and therefore inspiration. And she has another just really fun way that she looks at things. She believes that ideas are, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this, disembodied energetic life forms and are separate from us. So she believes that ideas are driven by a single impulse to be made manifest. So in other words, to collaborate with a human being and to become a thing or a creation out there. So she says it is only through a human's efforts that an idea can be escorted out of the ether and into the realm of actual. So she refers to these ideas swirling out here, looking for available and willing human beings. And when it thinks it finds someone, it will pay us a visit with 
as a synchronicity or a, some sort of inspiration. And most often she says that, that we don't see it or recognize it, or we may catch that synchronicity, but we think it's all in our head kind of thing. And so it will come back again and again. And if we just don't pick up on it, it may go away. But then someday we may say, wait a minute, that's knocked on my door once or twice before. I'm going to pay attention to this. And, you know, they've laid it on thick for us, basically. So we decide, yes, I want to bring this idea, this, this inspiration to life in whatever I'm going to create. And she said, at that point, we are making a contract. And of course, she also has a contract. We are making a contract for this idea that we're going to make space for it in our lives and we are going to see it all the way through to the end and she's like we're, we don't proceed as you know a tormented artist oh it's so hard to write but instead look at it with respect and curiosity not dread and doom and gloom and all that kind of good stuff so she views us that we are a partner with that idea that had been floating out there right the idea wanted to be born picks us, we recognize it, and now we're under contract and we're in a partnership to see this idea manifest itself into actuality. And we've cleared the space and it's going to happen. And she said, the more we do that, the more ideas may flow to us as well. But if we break that contract, we decide we don't have enough time, we've got too much on our plate, then we have to be okay with letting that go because that idea needs to be born and there's somebody else out there that may pick it up and see it to fruition kind of thing. And I thought that was a great, it's not really an analogy, but a, a great way to look at things too. And I've definitely seen this happen because remember, I've already written book two and I haven't acted on it and I think the time has passed. I, it may be a reference guide for me to use in the next book, but the blood, sweat, tears that I put into it for a year or so, I didn't, I didn't see it to fruition kind of thing. And maybe it, maybe that form that I created in wasn't meant to be. So I'm not like, I'm not upset about it because I've kind of come to terms with this, what she's talking about as well. So those are kind of the three points that I wanted to share today. Fun, great book. I think it would be a perfect December read because it isn't anything heavy that's going to kind of pull you, pull you down or make you really focus um, over the course of a busy month, but it could give inspiration to you for opening yourself to more creativity as the new year of 2024 comes about. So I would definitely recommend this one. I love it. Um, maybe I'll read it again at some point. And this was a good reminder of some of the fun things that she discusses and points out. So with that, that is a wrap. Thank you for joining me today. I will be back later in the week with a message for all of you and discussion. And in the meantime, be well and keep stepping forward.